Hey y'all, I have been deathly ill for like over a week now and it is, it is so frustrating. I almost never get sick, but when I do, I get really sick. So I wasn't able to upload last week and I apologize for that. I also had some other stuff going on. Yeah, but I'm back and I have more Glitch in the Matrix stories that I'm so excited to read. I love these. I have like this whole article has been insane so far and we're only on 43 out of like a hundred stories. Reading might be a little difficult for me today. I'm probably gonna cough a lot, which will obviously be cut out. I'm just saying if it's really choppy, I apologize. Um, I'm gonna try to read as smoothly as I can, but I'm not promising anything. So like I said, we're on 43. This says war stories. When I was 16, I went to California with my mom. We were there on vacation and we were doing some shopping in La Jolla. Mom wanted to go into an artist studio that I wasn't too interested in, so I decided to wander around the area to see what I could see. I walked past an alley between two shops and saw a figure resting against the dumpster. From the entry to the alley, I could see he was very likely homeless due to his tattered, dirty clothes, well-traveled shoes, and grungy demeanor. He looked up at me and in a raspy, tired voice asked, son, might I trouble you to spare a dollar? Not usually the type to approach such situations, but I figure since we were in a relatively active area that I didn't have too much to worry about. Plus, he's a human in need. I walked closer to him and pulled a dollar out of my wallet. As I handed it to him, I noticed his hat was a Vietnam War veteran hat with a few pins on it. I asked him if he served and he said that he most regrettably did. He also said that since you were kind enough to donate a dollar, I believe you can buy you a story or two. Now, I love war stories, memorabilia, strategies, anything, love that stuff. I was more than happy to listen to him. He began to tell me a story. He was 19 when he first arrived in Nam under the colors of black and yellow. Yes, sir, I was one of the first. Damn proud of it, too. He told me the story of how he was a helo gunner. I'm sorry if I'm saying any of this wrong. In the Pliku campaign during the Tet Offensive, he was the unlucky son bitch that had to carry the goddamn meat saw around. He carried the M60. I don't know what that is, but it sounds terrifying. He said his entire squad was wiped out by a 122 millimeter rocket bar barrage, barrage, I don't know, and that none of them even made it out of the city. It was at this point he got visibly distressed and I felt extremely human. The men he'd done so much with, who all have families and stories of their own, suddenly gone. He never once mentioned his name. Anyways, after a few moments of silence, he looked up at me and said, thank you for listening and thank you again for the dollar. I promised you two stories, but as I could barely make it through one, I'd like you to have this. He seemed like he'd appreciate it more than me, and he pulled off a pin from his hat and handed it to me. It was a poorly made and weathered M60 pin. I thanked him for the pin and for the story, and thanked him for his services so that people like me could live our lives comfortably and without knowing the horrors of war. My phone began to vibrate. I pulled it out of my pocket and answered it. My mom was asking where I was. I stepped out of the alley and flagged her my direction. When I turned back to tell the man it was time for me to go, you know in those movies where the protagonist is talking to some mysterious being, turns away for a second, then turns back only to find their guest has disappeared without a trace? Just completely gone? That. There was nowhere he could have gone. Nowhere he could have hid. Nothing there but the padlocked dumpster. I heard nothing. Mom didn't see anyone run past me, nothing. I told mom about him and showed her the pin and she agrees. It's totally weird. Later I thought back on it and remembered he said his entire squad was wiped out and none of them made it out of the city. None of them made it out of the city. That is like the cr uh, that no, these stories are insane. I'm so sorry. That what the fuck? I also want to say really quickly, this lighting might be absolutely terrible. I can't tell. Um, I tried a couple different spots, um, and it was like bad everywhere. This might be so bright, it's insane, and I apologize if it's really bad when I'm editing. I won't sit here again. Number 44 says, just a flash, then it happened. I used to be pretty skeptical about most things paranormal. One day while driving home late one night, I was passed on the freeway by a car. In my head, I saw clearly the car flipped over in a ditch. The flash was vivid as hell, but I shrugged it off. When I exited the freeway, sure enough, the car that passed me was at the light waiting to turn the opposite way as me. The light turns, he goes, I make the decision to follow him based on that flash. I had waited a few seconds and had already lost sight of him. When I turned, I go about two blocks. Sure enough, I reach the ditch and in it is the overturned car. I get off and help the man out of his car, call the cops. He was drunk as hell. Anyway, that one experience makes me acknowledge there's more out there than we know. What is with all of these stories of people having like visions of things happening and them actually happening? I just don't even understand. I, I genuinely don't understand. Are you all psychic? 45 doesn't have a title, so no idea what this one's about, but let's get into it. So before my husband and I were married, we lived separately. He would come over and spend time, then leave later at night, like 11 or 12. He left one night at my front door, which has three locks, a lock on the knob, a deadbolt, and what I call a hotel lock. 
It's a lock that you flip the long piece over onto the short peg, and then the door can only be opened a few inches. Well, he left and used his key to lock the knob and deadbolt, but I thought to myself, I have to go lock the hotel lock. I come down and it's locked already. Absolutely no way he could have locked it from outside. No, that's scary as hell because I would think somebody's in my house. 46 also doesn't have a title, so yeah. I took a hard news slash soft news journalism class in college where one of the assignments was to write an obituary for one of my grandparents. The professor told us to write it on a deceased grandparent, but if all of your grandparents were still alive, we had to choose one. Oh my God. In my case, all of my grandparents were alive. I would hate that. That made me so sad. I procrastinated the assignment until the night before it was due because it seemed like a dumb assignment. I kind of agree. Scramming for an easy grandparent to write about, I gave my mom a call and asked her for some basic biological information about my maternal grandfather who was still alive. Biographical, sorry. As we were talking about my grandpa's career, my mom couldn't recall the name of one of the companies he had worked at. She lectured me about waiting until the last minute to write the assignment because it was late, 10.30 p.m. at grandpa's time. However, she said she would give him a call to see if he was still awake and be able to answer that question for my assignment due the following morning. When my mom called my grandpa, my grandma answered the phone in a panic. I knew this was gonna happen. My grandma frantically explained that the paramedics had just arrived and they were performing CPR on my grandpa because he had stopped breathing and passed out. My mom was able to stay on the phone with my grandma until they took my grandpa to the hospital where he was declared dead. In the time my mom and I had been talking on the phone about my grandpa's obituary, he was dying out of the blue at that. He had been otherwise healthy considering his age. We ended up using the obituary I wrote for that writing assignment as his actual obituary. Still freaks me out when I think about the timing. I would literally feel like it's my fault. Like I know it's not, I absolutely know for 100%. It is not your fault in the slightest, but I would feel like, what if I wrote about like, grandma instead would she be dead? Like, I okay, and apparently none of these have titles anymore because I see 47 and 48 and nothing has titles, whatever. I used to love drawing portraits when I was younger, but I wasn't very good at it. So I threw them away a lot of the time. But one day, I drew one that I was really proud of, so I kept it. About a week or so later, we had a new girl start in our class, and I thought she looked super familiar. And a few days into the week, I realized it was because she was the girl I had drawn. I went home and found the drawing, and sure enough, nearly identical. Nearly because I was 10 and unskilled. It freaked me out, and I felt weird about drawing portraits of nobody ever since. No, that's weird, because I thought you were drawing portraits of people you knew. You were just drawing people, and you... Whoa. 48. I heard the upstairs neighbors get into another fight at 3 a.m. Plates thrown onto the ground, etc. Very noisy as it's directly above. I found out the next day that my upstairs neighbors moved out weeks ago and that the flat was vacant and completely empty. There are just three flats in the block. First floor, elderly couple, us on the second, and the third floor. You have ghosts. There are ghosts up there who are recreating their fights because they're so sick of listening to me. 49. In college, I delivered pizzas to make money. I had a delivery that should have taken about 20 minutes. When I returned to the store, the manager asked me what had taken so long. I asked him what he meant and he pointed to the computer showing I had been gone for an hour and seven minutes. I don't remember delivering the pizza, only turning into the store when I was returning. Before anyone suggests aliens, no, my anus was not sore. What the fuck? I also don't drink or do drugs. 20 years later, I still have no idea what happened. No, I'm, and I'm going with the alien theory, sorry. Title list number 50. Not especially creepy, but it did used to unnerve me when I was young. When I was little, I used to have a Thomas the Tank Engine book with fold out parts and flaps. There was this one part, which was like a shed. You could lift a flap to see inside. Inside was all the usual gardening slash shed paraphernalia. I love the use of that word there. There was also a black cat sat in there. Here's the glitch though. I swear the cat wasn't always there. I used to love that book, but every time I read it, I would get to that page and guess whether the cat would be there or not. Not a clue what that was all about really, but it creeped a young me out. So the cat would only sometimes be there. It wasn't even like, like a, what's a Mandela effect where it wasn't there, but then it was all the time. Like it was just random because that would also freak me out as an adult. A lot of these are getting kind of short. I feel like the last video, they were all really long, but here's 51. A few months before my first car accident, I dreamed about it happening. I hate these ones. Everything from the sounds to the placement and the smell was the same. Thing is, the girl driving tried to get me to find a different ride because she didn't want to do any extra driving that day. And after the crash, I told her about my dream and she said she had the same one the night before and that's why she didn't want to drive. Freaky shit, dude. No, because both, that's those, okay. Those already freak me out when you can like, you know what's gonna happen before it even does because you had a fucking vision. But when two of you do, like, do you guys remember? I think it was in the first video I did on this article. So it was like a couple weeks ago where it was like, a guy, I think he was either a plumber or a contractor or something. 
and he went to this old lady's house and he had dreamed of the old lady and the whole experience and he gets there and he knows her and she knows him because she had the exact same dream. That one will never leave my mind. This one is more silly than creepy, but once when I went with my grandmother to her friend's house, I was on the porch by myself with my grandmother's friend's cat and the cat looked at me right in the eyes and said the word meow. It didn't sound like a cat meowing at all. It sounded very convincingly like a human carefully enunciating the word meow, two syllables, in their most thoroughly unconvincing cat voice. Like someone intentionally doing a very poor impression of a cat as a joke, but it was perfectly in time with the movement of the cat's mouth and there was no one else around. So it had to have been the cat saying it. No, honestly though, Nar, I have to cough. When Nar meows, it's like, Meow. It, it doesn't sound like a cat. Nar has the weirdest voice ever, and you guys have definitely heard him in some of my videos. I wish he was here so I could like make him say it. But Nar has the weirdest meow ever, and sometimes I think he's a human in a cat suit. When I was about 15, I was eating some cereal and accidentally dropped my spoon onto the kitchen floor. I watched the spoon fall. As it hit the floor, it just vanished into thin air. I was shocked. I thought surely my eyes were playing tricks on me. It must have just bounced away and gone out of sight or something. I spent 30 minutes searching the kitchen for that spoon, I was honestly kind of freaked out. I tried to think of every possible place it could have gone. There weren't many places it could have ended up. I never found it. That's, and it, that, that, now that's a glitch if I've ever heard one. Like some of these, I'm like, this could be this, or this could be this, or whatever. That is, and now that is a glitch. I was walking my dog. On his leash, there is a little plastic attachment that holds his poop bags. I dropped the leash onto the ground. I heard the plastic hit the ground, but it turns out it ended up back in my hand. Imagine dropping something, hearing and seeing it drop, then somehow it's in your hand, all under a couple seconds. Those two stories are weirdly similar and I don't like that. 55, this is late and pretty stupid, but why not? I was once showering and after about 10 minutes in the shower, I hear something ping and hit the floor. I looked down and saw a penny. I was pretty perplexed as you can imagine, but figured whatever, I'll keep it as I imagined it could be good luck. I kept the penny in my wallet for a few years in a zipped side pouch. I never really told anyone because it was kind of pointless to talk about a random penny I was superstitious about. So a few years later, while at a music festival, a girl in our tent woke up to a penny in her... I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Let me read that again. A few years later, while at a music festival, a girl in our tent woke up to a penny in her butt crack. Am I reading that right? We all laughed it off as having a wild night. However, I remembered the penny I had. And when I looked in the zipped pouch, I was shocked to find it was gone. I told my friends and they didn't believe me. I think they threw the penny away too. How did your lucky penny end up in, what the, I, you know what, honestly, I, I don't even wanna know. Not sure if anyone will believe me or not, but fuck it, here it goes. When I was in high school, my friend Phil killed himself. I never really knew the specifics. All I know is that, oh, fuck, oh my God, he shot himself at one of the local parks. Fast forward six or so years and I'm asleep in my bed next to my ex-wife. Having a fairly normal dream, I was at a store doing something or another. I can't really remember the specifics of the beginning of the dream. What I do remember is running into Phil in the store. When I saw him, everything got super weird. He actually looked like Phil, not like in most dreams where people will be certain people but look not look like them. He actually looked like Phil. He looked at me and smiled and said, hey man. At that moment, the dream got crystal clear. Sorry, Williams is drinking water. I thought he would only take like a sip, but he has been chugging and you might be able to hear it, I don't know. I asked him if it was really him and he said it was. He told me we were gonna hang out for a bit and after that, the dream got super lucid. He showed me how to make stuff and generally we just fucked around doing dream things. Suddenly, I realized that my dream was coming to an end. I turned to him and asked him if I was about to wake up. He said yes. And he said he had fun coming to hang out with me for a bit. I don't know why, but I asked, so why'd you do it? Why did you kill yourself? The way he answered chilled me to my core. And not necessarily what he said, just how he said it. He replied, my girlfriend cheated on me, man. He said it like it was a question he had answered before. Like when somebody asks you what your first job was, you've responded with this exact same sentence so many times that it just falls off your tongue effortlessly. I said that really bad effortlessly. I'm sorry, I don't want to reread that because I feel like this is such an insane story. I don't want to like reread things. Except I had known his girlfriend and they were the kind of couple that everyone admired. I said, Sophie? Sophie cheated on you? His eyes lit up like he realized he was talking to someone that actually knew him in real life. He said, yeah, man, Sophie cheated on me. We gave each other a hug and he wished me well. I woke up and felt super strange. It was somewhere around two or three in the morning. I closed my eyes and thought, Phil, if that was really you, I need you to give me a sign. No sooner than when that thought finished, my phone started ringing. 
it came across as an unknown number and only rang twice. I knew I wasn't dreaming anymore because my ex-wife woke up and sleepily asked me who was trying to call me so late. To this day, when I think about that story, I get chills. It's like heartbreaking, but I like, I don't even know how to just like say this in a, like a good way. I feel like in a sense you got closure because you never knew what happened. And that is such a difficult thing to navigate, obviously. But then like not knowing why or what happened or this and that, I don't know. I feel like you got the closure you needed from your friend and it's absolutely heartbreaking. And I'm so sorry for your loss, but like, holy shit. I, I mean, I don't know. It's like part of me is kind of like, I feel like it's kind of nice that he came to visit you, but it's also such a terrible situation that it feels weird to say that. I'm gonna read a couple more, we're on 57. Not long after 9-11, on a Friday, I got up to go to class and had one of those mornings. Broke a glass, getting something to drink, tripped over something going to my car. Was late to class due to a wreck on the way there, not me, thankfully. While at school, we heard about a plane crashing. Something about the wings blowing off. Went to work, went home. The next morning, my roommate wakes me asking if I'm skipping class today. After he convinces me it is still Friday, I get up and go to class. After noticing the glass I broke is not broke, on the way, I pass the same wreck in the same spot. All day, I wait to hear about the plane, but it never happens. Ends up kind of a normal day. That is so weird. You, re that's like happy death day or whatever. You live the same day twice, but at least you were dead, I don't know. I was sitting on my porch and had my debit card on the table in front of me. I went inside to get something to drink, patio furniture in sight, and a six foot privacy fence around the yard. I also lived alone. Went back outside and it was gone. I searched everywhere, inside and out, but couldn't find it. Nothing was withdrawn from my account, so two days later I canceled it and requested a new one. Two weeks later, I went out to sit on the porch, I did this every day, and the old card was sitting right there on the table. It just fucking appeared. There was nothing else on the table. It was just gone, and then it wasn't. That is so T. That is so T. I feel like that's paranormal. That's what I mean. Some of these stories, I'm like, I feel like this could be paranormal, because T would do that shit. She would take something that was in plain sight, I would not be able to find it. I would search everywhere, even though I knew I left it in plain sight. And then it would just appear, like almost in the exact same spot or in another spot in plain sight. And it would, a few nights back, I was wide awake in the guest bed at my place and heard quiet footsteps. And then my wife say, hey, gently at the door. It seemed weird. So I got up to see what she wanted and she was fast asleep in bed. Fuck that one. I was going down the stairs and went past my brother who was coming up the stairs, said hi. And he sort of mumbled back. Got downstairs, walked through to the kitchen, only to find him standing there. I hated both of those. I hate those kinds of stories. It's like a mimic or something weird or something. I don't know, like a doppelganger. Are doppelgangers bad? I actually don't know that. I don't know if that's a bad thing or if it's just someone who looks like you, but I feel like it could also be like, you know, I, do you know what I'm saying? We're on 61, depending, I, I don't know. This might be the last one I read, but also I'm like, I'm like having, I love these stories, so it might not be the last one I read. I'm not promising anything, but this might be the last one. I had an Android phone which had a Google Cards feature option that could notify you like 15 minutes to home if you were out. I thought this feature was annoying and useless so I kept the feature off. After several months of no cards notifications, one night I'm at home and a card pops up saying 35 minutes to home, pinning me at a random intersection on the other side of town. Let's call it First Street. I think, that's weird. I'm not even way over there. I don't even know where that is. I've never been to that area. I go to my card setting to turn it back off, but it's already turned off. That's weird. Next night, exact same thing happens. 35 minutes to home from First Street. What the? Still definitely not over there. Check cards feature and the notifications are still turned off, so no idea why I'm getting a notification. A few days later, a friend and I are out running errands and he misses his intended exit, so he takes the next one. Once on the streets, I ask, where are we? I've never been over here. Suddenly, a car to our right tries to turn left and crashes right into us. Messed up the wheel to be unable to turn, so he pulled toward the curb to call a tow truck. We had our kids in the car, so I call my sister to pick us all up. When my sister asks me for the location, I look up at the street sign, First Street. Like, I just, I, I just, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay, these next couple are all really short, so I think I'm going to read them. And I'm not having that hard of a time. I've, I've coughed a couple times, but it's like not that bad, so I'm going to keep reading. Long ago, when I was a kid, my younger brother and me were driving our bikes on the embankment alongside the river, and there was a huge dam thingy on the river. I grew up in this town, and I never knew we had a dam. When we got home, I told my mother that it was the first time I have seen the dam, and she did not know what I was talking about. Later, I returned, and there was nothing there. My brother does not remember, but I had seen it clear as day. I'm sure it was my imagination, but it's strange. I didn't dream it, since my brother remembered that we were there, he just doesn't remember the dam. 
What? We're gonna do a speed run of these next ones. 14 years old, I was at my friend Dylan's house in early December. It was me, Dylan, and his mother in the house. His mom asked if we could put together a big wheel bike for Dylan's brother. We took the box to Dylan's room and started putting the thing together. Out of nowhere, I look at Dylan and say, your dad is about to walk in and say, hey guys, how's it going? Dylan says, but my dad isn't even home. We stare at his door and not even 30 seconds later, the door props open and his dad sticks his head in. Hey guys, how's it going? I still have no clue what the hell happened, but it freaked Dylan out. No, because you would never come over again. I'm a security guard at a distribution warehouse. Sometimes I have to work graveyard shift. During this time, the only people on the premises is me and a rear truck driver bringing in a late load. Our guard shack is concrete with sliding glass doors on the sides, no locks, and big windows in front and back. Sometimes when I'm the only person on the premises, I'll see a reflection of someone walking past the shack. Every inch of this shack and the yard is covered by security cameras. No one has shown up on the footage when I see these reflections. That's paranormal. I'm so sorry, that is paranormal. Okay, now I'm actually just gonna read one more because a lot of these are short and I'm just gonna keep going if I don't stop myself. 65, the final one actually. I was 11 or 12, early 70s. Dad came home one Friday and announced we were going to Kings Island, a fairly new amusement park, tomorrow. I begged him to let me invite my friend Chris to come along. He said, okay, as long as Chris could pay his own way. Great, off to the phone I went. Pick it up, no dial tone. Hello? Oh my God, is that you? Chris, I was just calling you, what's up? I was calling to ask if you wanna to come to Kings Island tomorrow, but you have to pay your own way. No phone ever rang. We both called each other at the exact same time to ask the exact same question. Weems is going to the bathroom now, so this is perfect timing to stop the video because he's using the litter box and you can hear it. I just told so many stories, I'm sorry. This might be a longer video, actually, honestly, I've been recording for like longer than I normally do, but I was coughing, so it might just be a normal video. I don't know, I had to like clear my throat a lot, sniffle a little bit. I am obsessed with these stories. I don't know what it is, they're just so crazy to me. Like nothing makes sense. I like that you can't explain almost any of it. Honestly, well, you probably could, but I can't. But I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys have any weird glitch in the matrix stories you wanna share with me or the community, I will have my subreddit linked down below. I'm not gonna ramble at the end of this video because I'm actually filming this. This video is going up on Sunday. I'm filming this before my video going up Friday. I, and I don't wanna say things in this video that I want to say Friday. Does that make any sense? Like I'm just gonna ramble a lot in my video for Friday. I'm gonna film that probably like tomorrow or the next day. Um, and I just have stuff to say and I don't wanna like repeat myself because I wanna say it now, but I'm, this is going up after. It would make more sense if you saw that video first. Am I making any sense here? So I'm gonna go. I love you guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye.